I have had a great deal of trouble choosing a title for this book. The concept psychological health, though still necessary, has various intrinsic shortcomings for scientific purposes which are discussed at various appropriate places in the book. So also does psychological illness, as Zaz and the existential psychologists have recently stressed. We can still use these normative terms and, as a matter of fact, for heuristic reasons we must use them at this time. And yet I am convinced that they will be obsolete within a decade. A much better term is self-actualization as I have used it. It stresses full humanness, the development of the biologically based nature of man, and therefore is, empirically, normative for the whole species rather than for particular times and places, i.e. it is less culturally relative. It conforms to biological destiny rather than to historically, arbitrarily, culturally local value models as the terms health and illness often do. It also has empirical content and operational meaning. However, besides being clumsy from a literary point of view, this term has proven to have the unforeseen shortcomings of appearing to a. imply selfishness rather than altruism, b. to slur the aspect of duty and of dedication to life tasks, c. to neglect the ties to other people and to society and the dependence of individual fulfillment upon a good society, d to neglect the demand character of non-human reality and its intrinsic fascination and interest. E. To neglect egolessness and self-transcendence. And F. To stress, by implication, activity rather than passivity or receptivity. This has turned out to be so in spite of my careful efforts to describe the empirical fact that self-actualizing people are altruistic, dedicated, self-transcending, social, etc. The word self seems to put people off, and my redefinitions and empirical description are often helpless before the powerful linguistic habit of identifying self with selfish and with pure autonomy. Also, I have found to my dismay that some intelligent and capable psychologists persist in treating my empirical description of the characteristics of self-actualizing people as if I had arbitrarily invented these characteristics instead of discovering them. Full humanness seems to me to avoid some of these misunderstandings, and also human diminution or stunting serves as a better substitute for illness and even perhaps also for neuroses, psychoses, and psychopathy. At least these terms are more useful for general psycho psychological and social theory, if not for the psychotherapeutic practice. The terms being and becoming, as I use them throughout this book, are even better. Even though they are not yet widely enough used to serve as common coin. This is a pity because the being psychology is certainly very different from the becoming psychology and the deficiency psychology, as we shall see. I am convinced that psychologists must move in this direction of reconciling the B psychology with the D psychology, i.e. the perfect with the imperfect, the ideal with the actual, the eupsychian with the extant, the timeless with the temporal, and psychology with means psychology. This book is a continuation of my motivation and personality, published in 1954. It was constructed in about the same way, that is, by doing one piece...